Well, guys, let's think about joints and joint movements uh, in this uh, in this video. And um, we're going to start off by just uh, looking at a handful of the most important or most significant joints that you'll need to know about uh, to be able to break down a sporting movement. Uh, so some of the key joints, um, particularly part of the appendicular skeleton that we use when we play in sport in order to produce sporting movements. So let's begin with the shoulder joint. Now the shoulder joint, as we've previously talked about in another video, the shoulder joint is a good example of a ball and socket joint. That is the type of joint that it is, ball and socket. Uh, and for the shoulder, the bones that we're talking about that form that joint are the humerus in the upper arm, the clavicle or collarbone and the scapula or shoulder blade. So those are the three bones that form together um, the shoulder joint and make up that joint. Then at the elbow, um, the, the type of joint at the elbow is a hinge joint. Uh, and that hinge joint at the elbow is again made of three bones, the humerus in the top of the arm, and then down in the forearm, the radius and the ulna, the radius and the ulna. And so the humerus, the radius and the ulna combine to form the hinge joint of the elbow. What other joints have we got? So we've got another uh, ball and socket joint here, the hip. Um, and the hip is essentially made up of the, the largest um, or at least the longest bone in the human body, the femur, um, which is the part of the, um, the joint that has the ball. Uh, and then the socket is the socket into which the ball sits and the socket is part of the pelvis, the pelvis. Then at the wrist, uh, we're going to classify the wrist as a condyloid joint. Uh, some people will refer to it as a hinge joint. Um, that's not too far off the truth um, in terms of the movements that are available, but it's not a pure hinge because we have more than flexion and extension available at the wrist. Uh, there are some other movements available, so we'll, we'll stick with condyloid. Um, and in terms of the bones that form uh, the wrist joint, we have the radius and the ulna, uh, of the of the lower arm and then down into the the bones of the hand the carpals moving down the body then we've got the uh, the knee joint the knee of course is a, a fairly classic sort of hinge joint uh, one of the best examples of a hinge joint in the body and is made up of primarily uh, the femur which is the thigh bone and the tibia now, we don't usually class the fibula as part of the knee joint because the, fib, the, the fibula actually attaches to the tibia a little lower down, um, near to the top uh, of the tibia, but a little lower down than the knee joint proper. Um, and we sometimes I've, I've included here, we sometimes include the patella as being part of the, the knee joint, even though it's a sesamoid bone which sits on top of the knee joint and its primary role is for protection uh, of the joint behind it. So the, the two main bones really that make up the knee joint are the femur and the tibia. Then down at the ankle, uh, we're going to class the ankle as a hinge joint. Um, it's very similar in, in structure to the wrist. Um, some of the bones of, of the ankle are somewhat larger uh, than the bones in the wrist uh, because of weight bearing and so on um, and attachments for, for larger muscles. Um, but essentially we're going we're gonna to describe it instead of, instead of we went with the wrist, we, we said that it was condyloid. We're going to stick with, stick with hinge for the ankle because that's its predominant and main movement. Uh, and the bones that make up the ankle are the tibia and the fibula of the lower leg and then the tarsals. Uh, in the ankle proper. Okay, so having gone through some of the key joints of the body, let's talk about some of the movements and the names for the movements that are available at those different joints. So initially, we'll start with uh, a couple of movements that are particularly common in hinge joints, but also available at ball and socket joints as well. Uh, and they are flexion and extension. Flexion and extension. And flexion and extension are opposite movements. Uh, in, in one plane or one direction. Uh, a flexion is simply when the joint angle decreases and the example on the screen you've got there is the, uh, is the elbow joint. So the angle between the humerus um, and uh, the radius and the ulna decreases, we say that that is elbow flexion. And when the angle increases uh, in the same joint, that would be elbow extension. So flexion, the joint angle decreases, extension, the joint angle increases. Um, specifically then, speaking of the foot, um, because of the, the peculiar sort of structure of the ankle, which is different 
uh, different to the wrist certainly uh, although we compared it a little bit earlier um, both movements both movements whether we point the toes up or point the toes down strictly speaking both of those movements are flexion movements um, and that is um, it's a little difficult to explain verbally without showing on the diagram um, but a dorsiflexion movement is the movement where the toes point up and it's flexion because the tibialis anterior on the front of the shin is contracting and reducing the joint angle hence flexion but then if you think about the uh, the diagram on the right hand side of the screen plantar flexion we've still got even though the angle of the joint or, or the joint is moving in the opposite direction in this case because the muscle that it's doing is uh, doing the movement is on the back of the leg um, and because the heel protrudes out we're talking about the angle between the heel or the calcaneal bone uh, and the tibia and the fibula so the angle between the calcaneal bone that sticks out that juts out backwards and the tib and the fib the tibia and the fibula that angle is actually decreasing as well so therefore it's flexion so although we've got and again please remember that this is a peculiar joint in the body this is the only joint in the body where this is true that both the downwards movement and the upwards movement of the foot both class as flexion and this is because of the peculiar nature and structure of the ankle so joint angle decreasing with toes pointing up is dorsi flexion dorsi flexion and then when the joint angle decreases and we're talking about the joint angle between the calcaneal bone and the tibia and fibula when that joint angle decreases we're pointing our toes down and we refer to that as plantar flexion and those terms dorsiflexion and plantar flexion only relate to the ankle okay so a couple more movements to talk about now um, first off hyperextension hyperextension uh, is where we have an extension movement and yet the joint angle moves past 180 degrees so the joint angle moves past 180 degrees so the example on the screen there is hyperextension of the elbow now most people's elbows um, can't can't hyperextend um, but a good proportion of people have the structure of the elbow and the shape of the bone so I do allow a certain extent of hyperextension not very far past 180 degrees but but five degrees maybe past 180 um, it's more common in females than it is in males um, for whatever reason um, hyperextension simply means joint angle moving past 180 so there are some joints where hyperextension is not desirable so for example in the knee um, if when we extend our knees what we want them to do is we want them to stop at 180 degrees because if they go if they go past that we're at risk of damaging uh, the ligaments and so on as part of the knee there are other joints however that it, it's fine for them to hyperextend if you think about uh, the vertebral column for example um, flexion at the hip uh, would mean leaning forwards for example um, extension at the hip would be leaning um, or, or sort of standing straight back up but then hyperextension would be then leaning backwards so there are some joints where hyperextension is desirable and possible and um, is kind of built into the structure of the joint uh, moving along uh, lateral flexion again remember flexion simply means the decrease of a joint angle lateral flexion just means decreasing a joint angle sideways so here we've got lateral flexion um, occurring in in the spine essentially a couple of other important movements especially when we're talking about sport are abduction and adduction uh, they sound very similar so it's important to be clear about what what we mean when we use these two words um, abduction abduction means to move a limb away from the midline of the body so basically we're talking about arms and legs if we move our arms so if you have your arms by your sides and you lift your arms uh, away from your body you are abducting your arms abducting your arms and the way that uh, I remember this and the way that I teach this is I talk about uh, being abducted by aliens so if you were to be abducted by an alien they would take you away so abduction means taking away abduction away from the midline of the body so again with our arms if we move our arms from the side from our sides 
up and away from the midline of the body, uh, those that the movement that's that's occurring in the shoulder is abduction. And then if we were to bring the arm back down again, again uh, with movement at the shoulder and bringing our arms back down to the sides of our bodies, uh, we would be adducting. That would be adduction. Uh, and that is simply to move towards the midline of the body. Um, adduction. So it begins with the word add. So we add things together. And in this case, we're, we're adding together our arm and our body. I don't know if that helps you to remember it. Uh, but it's important to remember the distinction between abduction as away from the midline of the body and adduction towards the midline. It's possible with arms and also with legs. Uh, a couple more important movements um, that often get confused, actually. Uh, it's important to note the, the diagrams here so we can make a distinction between these two movements. We've got rotation and circumduction rotation and circumduction and both of those words have something to do with circles um, rotation simply means um, turning or pivoting around a fixed long axis so if you imagine um, your leg uh, having an imaginary line running from uh, the hip all the way down to the heel that line is not going to go anywhere so you're not going to abduct the leg or anything like that um, that line is going to stay fixed, um, but you're going to, for example, turn your toes and turn your foot outwards. That would be a lateral rotation because you're turning the foot outwards. So the, the long axis along which you're turning, so imagine a, a line running right through the middle of that limb. That, that long axis isn't going anywhere. It's staying where it is, except the limb is turning or rotating around that fixed long axis. Um, so lateral rotation is when we rotate around an axis away from the midline of the body, as you can see on the diagram. So for example, if you, if you were standing up uh, and you rotated uh, your left foot out, you would be performing lateral rotation uh, of the left leg. And that rotation in that case would be occurring at the hip because that would be the joint that would be moving Likewise, if you were to be standing and you turned your legs were straight and you turned your toes towards the middle of the body uh, without that long axis moving anywhere, you are performing rotation at the hip, but it's medial towards the middle. That's what the word medial means, medial rotation. Now, circumduction is often confused with rotation because it also includes the idea of, of, of circles. But in this case, and as you can see from the diagram, circumduction is when the distal end of the limb draws, or technically speaking, the right word is describes a circle. So, so in the example on the screen, it's the shoulder joint allowing the movement. And since it's a ball and socket um, joint, it allows circumduction. So in this case, the circumduction, the hand at the end uh, of, of the limb, the hand is drawing a circle in space. But the shoulder, which is allowing the movement, is almost like the point of a cone. So you can imagine you have a, 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 a circle based cone, a cone with a base that is a circle that you're drawing. Um, and only one end is moving in space. The other is essentially pretty much at least pretty much fixed in space. So the shoulder is fixed where it is and the end of the hand is making a circle. That is circumduction. And you can do the same with your legs again because um, of a ball and socket joint in the hip allows you to make circumduction. So a good sporting example of this would be uh, performing a step over in football. It might be quite an elaborate step over, but a step over nonetheless, where you're swinging your leg out and round the ball. Um, you are describing a circle with the, with the foot. Because you're doing that, it's the hip that's allowing that movement. You are performing circumduction at the hip. Um, so there are a couple of uh, movements that we need to know in a different plane, in a horizontal plane. So we know what horizontal means. It means level with the horizon. If you were to hold your arm out in front of you um, and move that arm across your body, um, so you're decreasing the angle between the humerus um, and the, the rest of the skeleton or the, the torso, you're decreasing that angle between the humerus 
um, towards across the pecs across the chest towards the midline of the body because that angle is decreasing and it's go you're moving it in the horizontal plane so directly out in front of you or across you uh, we call that horizontal flexion and if you were to hold your arm out to the side um, and move it behind you then because you're increasing that angle again in the horizontal plane we call that horizontal extension horizontal extension um, two more horizontal movements if we are moving away from the midline of the body in the horizontal plane we call that horizontal abduction remember abduction and adduction from previously and then as you can see in the diagram moving back towards the midline we've got horizontal adduction so if you were to start with your right arm across your body um, across your body point is sort of out in front of you but across the body um, that arm would be in horizontal flexion then you would if you move that arm from across your body to directly out in front of you that arm um, from that position out directly to the side is performing horizontal abduction and then if you were to move it behind level with you um, backwards you're performing horizontal extension Okay, so there's a lot of joints um, and particularly joint movements there uh, by all means go back through the video um, practice some of them your your body is your own best resource as far as joint movements are concerned have a go at them try and remember them perhaps even say them out loud while you make the movements and that should help you to be able to remember these um, I hope that video has been helpful thanks for watching